Good morning, class. We are looking at section 8.5. Polar form of complex numbers, also known as the complex plane with the Moore's theorem. We covered polar equations. We're going to go to complex plane, the Moore's theorem. Uh, we're going to plot points. Those are the objectives in complex plane, convert the complex number between rectangular and polar form, find product and quotient of complex numbers in polar form, use the Moore's theorem, and find complex roots. So first, of course, I'm going to give you the uh, synopsis of what we have seen as basic trigonometric identities. You recall all those fundamental identities, periodic functions, even and odd functions, sum and difference formulas. Uh, double angle, half angle formulas. Okay, I'm reminding you all of all of those. Uh, polar coordinates, uh, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, tan theta is y over x, and changing from polar, to rectangular, x is r cosine theta, y is r sine theta. So to plot a point in the form of a polar, we have the polar axis, which is the positive side of the x-axis, and the origin, which is called the pole. You start with the angle theta first, and then you go r tick marks. <clears throat> That's how you do that. For example, here is 2 pi over four. So first you locate the line theta equals pi over four and you go with two tick marks. Various graphs were discussed. If theta is a constant, and then we are dealing with the line which goes through the origin, tan alpha times x, or equals a represents a circle, R cosine theta equals A represents X equals a vertical line, or sine theta equals B represents a horizontal line, Y equals B. And there are a number of ways to represent, represent the circle. R equals 2A cosine theta or negative 2A cosine theta as well as 2A sine theta minus 2A sine theta. Those are some famous ones we should be familiar with. And of course, there are more interesting ones. We can graph them using the methodology that has been discussed. So basically, you plot points. And uh, as long as you have a few points, you should be able to see the graph. Now, we want to go to the new stuff and start with the complex plane the Moore's theorem summary. So that's what I want to start with. A complex number in the form of z equals x plus y, i, x and y are real numbers. And as you recall, i is square root of negative one, is an imaginary number. The magnitude or modulus of z is the distance from the origin to the point x comma y. So we write as the modulus of z or absolute value of z is square root of x squared plus y squared, which is r. So r is square root of x squared plus y squared. We can also write it as the square root of z, z bar, where z bar, z is x plus y, or z bar is x minus y, i the conjugate of z, the conjugate of z. So you just change this sign. a plus bi, a minus bi. Those are considered conjugate. So x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. If r is larger than or equal to zero and theta is between zero and two pi, the complex number in polar form, z equals x plus y i, X is replaced with R cosine theta. Y is replaced with R sine theta. So we have it in this form. Now, the shorthand notation of 
or cis theta. C stands for cosine, I stands for the I, and S stands for sine. So R cis theta is a shorthand notation. So here's a graph of a complex number. We have the real axis, we have the imaginary axis. In essence, you can think of the real axis as the x-axis and imaginary axis as the y-axis, where R or the modulus of z square root of x squared plus y squared. This angle is theta, this distance is x, this distance is y, this distance is r, just as we have seen it before. Z is r cis theta, also r e to the power of i theta, that's Euler formula, if you will. r squared equals x squared plus y squared, tan theta is y over x. The product of z1 and z2, you multiply r1 and r2, and then you add up their uh, angles, cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2, plus i sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. In the case of a division, you divide r1 and r2, and then cosine of theta minus theta 1 minus theta 2, plus i sine of theta 1 minus theta 2. Uh, the Moore's theorem says if you want to raise a number to the power of n, you raise r to the power of n, the uh, magnitude or the modulus to the power of n, and then you multiply the angle theta by n, cosine n theta plus i sine n theta. If a number in the form of uh, complex format R cis theta is given, and we're going to call it theta sub zero, where n is larger than or equal to two, then we can get n this thing complex nth roots of W, z sub k is the nth root of R, cis theta zero over n plus two k power n, where k is anywhere from zero, one, two, all the way to n minus one. We will look at all of them. This is the synopsis the summary of the whole section. Uh, we want to write this number square root of z equals square root of three minus i in polar form. We want to plot and write it. First and foremost, reminding everybody, here's the real axis, here's the imaginary axis. So this is a, this is b, so this point has coordinates a plus bi has the value of a plus bi. And as an example, drop three plus two i, you go three to the right, two up, and it becomes three plus two i. So this one, we're gonna go square root of three to the right. Square root of three is about 1.71. So somewhere between one and two, closer to two. Minus i, so look at just the coefficient of i, minus one, that means go down by one, so somewhere here. So that's the plot. Now, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So r is the square root of that. Plug in. So we plug in square root of 3 and square root plus negative 1 squared. Again, I want to make sure we understand that this is, in essence, a plus bi, where this becomes a and this becomes b or this becomes x, this becomes y, okay? So <clears throat> square root of three squared is three, minus one squared is one, they add up to four, and square root of that is two. Tan theta is y over x, and that makes it negative one. Again, x is square root of three, y is negative one. Negative one over square root of three, or negative square root of three over three. And we know this is quadrant four. So if you stick with square root of three over three, you know the answer is pi over six. Minus makes it minus pi over six, or in this quadrant, 11 pi over six. Again, I'm assuming everybody remembers the, you know, uh, how to find the value of theta, uh, starting with the reference arc. Again, quickly, with this is the case, the reference arc, is pi over six, okay? Because 
you think of the positive portion. This is a reference arc and it resolves. So these are cis theta. Again, shorthand notation class. So R is two cosine of 11 power six plus I sine of 11 power six. And again, you could just write it two cis, let me write that. You could also write two cis 11 power six. Both of them are acceptable. When you answer a question, you want to answer it accordingly, however they ask you. Uh, plotting a point in a complex plane and converting from polar to rectangular form, Z is two cosine of 30 degrees, I sine of 30 degrees. As you recall, we have the grid. So we start with what? The angle first, 30 degrees, right? And we go how many? Two tick marks. So that's 30 degrees angle, one and two tick marks. So that's plotting it. Converting it. Just replace the cosine of 30 with square root of three over two and sine of 30 with one half. These two cancels out both of, both of the denominators and there you have it. We want to write this in a rectangular form. Well, r is three and theta is three pi over two clearly, right? Now, what is cosine of three pi over two? Zero. What is sine of three pi over two? Minus one. So the answer is negative three i. We want to find the product and quotients of complex numbers in polar form. If Z1 is represented by R sub one cosine theta one plus I sine theta one, Z2 is R sub two cosine of theta two, plus I sine of theta two, then Z1, Z2, you multiply R1 by R2, and then you add up theta one and theta two. If you're dividing it, you divide R1 by R2, and then you subtract theta two from theta one. So let's look at the proof of one of them. For example, let's look at the look at the proof of the product. So we just distribute. So first I'm gonna write R1 times R2 and I'm gonna put it out. Now, cosine theta one times cosine theta two. cosine theta one times I sine theta two. And we're gonna put the I first. I sine theta one cosine theta two. I times I, I squared, which we're gonna write it as I squared for now sine theta one, sine theta two. So in that order, and bear in mind, again, we put, we are just distributing R1 and R2, we put it in the beginning, cosine theta one, cosine theta two comes here, cosine theta one, I sine theta two, and I put the I in front, you can put it in between and then bring it, ultimately you have to bring it to front. Now I sine theta one, cosine theta two, I sine theta one, I sine theta two becomes I squared sine theta one, uh, theta two. Now sine, this is sine theta two. Okay, 
No. What I want you to notice I squared is what? I squared is one. I want you to notice that. Then if we put these two together, I squared negative one, right? I apologize, I thought I said negative one. And then we put these two together. Of course, the middle one, we take the I out. The middle one, we took the I out, everybody. Now this is cosine of theta one plus theta two. This is sine of theta one plus theta two. So R1, R2, cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2 plus I sine of theta 1 plus theta 2. So we prove that. And we are going to move on. All right. Now, Z is given, W is given. We want to find the product using the formula r1 r2 three times five cis twenty plus 100 so 15 cis 100 tony now we're going to use this formula r1 over r2 that means three over five, cis, theta one minus theta two means 20 minus 100. So this makes it negative eight. Between zero to two pi, we can add 360 degrees. With negative AD becomes 280, it's the same thing. Both of them represent the fourth quadrant. We wanna write this in standard form. Here's the Moore's theorem. So we are going to raise r to the power of four, and we are going to multiply the theta by four, whatever this number is. So what do we get? 16, cosine of 60, I sine of 60. So if we were to use it just the way it's given without this change would take forever to do the math. But now cosine of 60 is one half, sine of 60 is squared of three over two. And we can drop the two 16 times that becomes eight and this becomes eight squared of three I. And that's the final answer. This is known as the Moore's theorem. Given one minus I find Z to the power of 10. 
if we were to raise this to the power of 10, would take forever. We are going to use the methodology we just learned here known as the Moore's theorem. So first and foremost, what is one minus I? We are going to write it as Z equals RC theta. So we need to find the Z, which is one squared plus negative one squared. Okay. Remember R is X squared plus Y squared. Okay. This gives us uh, one and one, two. So it's squared of two. 10 theta is y over x or minus one over one. And that gives you negative pi over four. As you can see, this is in the fourth quadrant. One is positive to the right. Imaginary value is negative below. So it's in the fourth quadrant. So this is a perfect answer. Of course, you can uh, change it to uh, seven pi over four if you want to make it positive, but we can uh, keep at that z equals r c theta. That makes it r, which is square root of two, cosine of minus pi over four plus i sine of minus pi over four. It doesn't matter you keep it negative or positive because we are going to evaluate this. Uh, to do so, we're going to follow this. We're going to raise this to the power of 10, and we're going to multiply negative pi over 4 by 10. So z to the power of 10. Square root of 2 to the power of 10 cosine. We're going to multiply the angle, the argument of cosine by 10. The same thing for the argument of sine by 10. So what happens? Uh, square root of two to the power of 10 is the same as two to the power of five and 10. This is minus 10 pi over four or minus five pi over two. Same thing here, right? Now we know two to the power of five is 32. And this one, uh, it's if you get rid of two pi, so you can add two pi if you bid. because if we want to see the value, we get minus pi over two. Now, cosine of minus pi over two or any uh, odd multiples of uh, pi over two is zero. Sine of pi over two is one. Sine of negative pi over two is negative one. So 32, times negative i or negative 32i is the final answer. the Moore's theorem. Therefore, one minus i to the power of 10 is negative 32i. We showed that to be the case. Write this expression in standard form of a plus b i z to the power of six is square root of three cosine of 10 degrees plus i sine of 10 degrees to the power of six. The Moore's theorem says, if you want to raise this to the power of n, this is what you do. You raise this one to the power of n. And then you multiply the angles by n, the argument. So, in other words, this is r to the power of 6, cosine of 6 theta plus i sine of 6 theta. So square root of 3 to the power of 6 is 6 times 10. Same thing here, 6 times 10. Uh, 
as you know, this is the same as three cubed makes it 27. Cosine of 60 plus I sine of 60. Cosine of 60 is one half. Sine of 60, square root of three over two. So multiply the 27, you get 27 halves plus 27 square root of three over two i. Uh, you can put the i in front or in the back. Makes no difference. So we looked at uh, multiplication, division of complex numbers, raising them to power using the Morse theorem. Let's look at uh, the roots. Complex roots, let W be R, cosine of theta zero plus I sine theta zero, that means cis theta zero. When N is a two or larger, It has n distinct complex roots. Z sub k that refers to the root is the nth root of R. Then the way we find all those roots, the methodology is to write cosine of theta zero divided by n and then two k pi divided by n. Two k pi divided by n. Of course, the same thing here. And you evaluate this as follows. You let k be zero, which makes it theta zero over n. One, two, and you go all the way to n minus one. So you want the fifth root, you go all the way to four. You want the 10th root, you go all the way to nine. That's the concept. So we want to find the complex cube roots of negative four. So first we are going to write negative four as R cis theta. That's the first thing we are going to do. Negative four is four cis pi or four cis 180 degrees. And since we want the cube root is n equals three. Now I gave you this without much of calculation. If you just go with the fact that this is minus four. So this distance is four and this angle is pi or 180. So there's really not much we have to evaluate. So we should know that. So it's, it's like one of those quadrants of angles that we are familiar with. So it is located on the negative side of the real axis or the x-axis. Now, according to this, uh, n is three plus, so we're gonna put three, so the cube root of R, which is four, cosine of theta zero over N, that means 180 over three plus two K pi. We are going to go with 360 degrees K over three. Again, uh, you can go with pi or 180. I chose to go with degrees, it's a tad easier here. So one more time, you have a choice. Okay, let me write all of this for you. Let me see what color. So first of all, R is four, okay. Theta sub zero is pi. 
or 180 degrees n is 3 so I could write pi over 3 plus 2k pi over 3 and the same thing here you could use any of it okay uh, using degrees is a tad easier so this remains unchanged this one we divide by 3 we get uh, 60 this one we divide by 3 we get 120 degrees times k and k is 0 1 2 all the way to n minus 1 so all so 0 1 2 and it stops n minus 1 n is 3 so we stop at 2 If I plug in zero, basically this goes away. So R C 60 degrees, R is cubed with a four. If I replace the K with one, I get 180 degrees. R C 180, R is cubed with a four. If I replace it with two, uh, 240 and 60 is 300. So R C 200, uh, 300, okay, 240 and 60 is 300. R C 300 degrees and R is cube root of four. So we have those three. Of course, the magnitude is square root of X squared plus Y squared. All cube roots have a magnitude of cube root of four. If I have arguments of 60 degrees, 180 degrees, 300 degrees, equally spaced at 360 over 3 or 120 degrees, which means all three points are equally spaced on a circle centered at 0, 0, x squared plus y squared with the radius this one to the second power, this is r squared. Remember, x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And it looks something like this. So this is 60 degrees. This distance or this distance or this distance, or the, the radius is cube root of uh, four. Hundred eighty degrees, three hundred degrees. As an example, let me clean up so you can see this easier. As an example, cube root of one is one cis zero. Remember, one is here, right? So the same token that I did the graph, one cis zero, and if you work it out, this is what you end up with, and. You can try this at home with zero degrees, 120, and 240 degrees. Minus one half plus square root of three over two i. Minus one half minus square root of three over two i. And simply one. It's pretty hard to see, but that's the concept. Let's plot 3 minus 4i in the complex plane and write it in polar form and write the theta in, degree, in, in degrees. And here's the synapse of what we remember, real imaginary. So 3 to the right, 4 down, just like 3 and Three comma negative four. That's the location. So Z is a three minus four I. That's the location. This is the theta we are interested. In. We know tan theta is negative four over three. This alpha 
is 10 inverse of that, which makes a negative 53.13 degrees. And that's perfect. If we want it to be positive, however, so if you said minus 53.13, it is correct. It's in the fourth quadrant. And the positive value of that makes it a reference arc. You subtract it from 360 degrees. And 306.87 degrees would be the same co-terminal angle, having a positive value. That's all. R is square root of x squared plus y squared, which makes it 3 squared plus negative 4 squared. This is a 9. This is 16. They add up to 25. Comes out as 5. X plus Y, I, or R, C, theta. Polar form, R, C, theta. R is 5. Theta is 306.87 degrees. And that's the polar form of 3 minus 4, I. Use the Moore's theorem to write 2 plus 2i to the power of 6 in the standard form of a plus bi. So first we are going to write it as r c theta. That means 2 plus 2i, this one, never mind the exponent. We're going to write this is z and we are looking for z to the power of 6. So to find that, first we need the r, square root of x squared plus y squared, which is 2 squared plus 2 squared. 4 and 4 is 8, uh, square root of 8, or 2 squared of 2. Uh, theta is a tan inverse of 2 over 2. That's the first quadrant, makes it 1. And tan inverse of 1 makes it pi over 4. because tan of pi over 4 is 1. So we have the z, 2 plus 2i is r cis theta, 2 square root of 2, cis pi over 4. Cis pi over 4, we can write it cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. Now we're going to raise it to the power of 6. We are going to use the Moore's there. So according to the Moore's there, we're going to raise R to the power of N. So we're going to raise this one to the power of 6. And we're going to multiply the theta, the argument, by N. So power 4 times 6, power 4 times 6. So again, r to the power of n means 2 squared of 2 to the power of 6. And n theta, that means 6 times power 4, 6 times power 4. In essence, just so you know how you calculate this, This is the product of 2 to the power of 6 and 2 cubed. I hope everybody understands. Everybody understands what I've done. The first number, 2, is the power of 6. The second one is square root of 2 to the power of 6, or 2 cubed. OK? So you have 2 to the power of 9. 
Uh, 2 to the power of 10 is 10 to 24. 2 to the power of 9 is half of that 5, 12. And Six pi over four is the same as three pi over two. So we have 512 cosine of three pi over two, which is zero, sine of three pi over two, which is negative one. And so it makes it minus 512 i, because this is zero minus i. This is zero. So using the Moore's theorem, we could come up with the answer. Z and W are given. We want to find the Z, W. We want to find the product of the two. So basically, Z1, Z2 is R1, R2, cis theta1 plus theta2. Three times four, R1, R2, cis, one thirty plus two seven. One thirty plus two seven. So three times four, cosine of one thirty plus two seventy, plus I, sine of one thirty plus two seven. So this is 12, this is 400 degrees. 12 cosine of 400 degrees, I sine of 400 degrees. Now, I can subtract 360 because it's a complete revolution plus 40 degrees. So I changed the 400 to 40 degrees because 40 and 400 degrees are co-termina, co-termina. Co-termina. Yes. For this type of problem, do you accept the final answer as this or 12 cis 40 degree? It depends how they want it. You really want to stick with a sign of uh, R cis sign of 40 degrees because they are the same and we are going to go from 0 to 2 pi or 0 to 360 mainly. By the way, in general, when you look at the question, it tells you whether you put it in radians or degrees. If it says between zero and two pi, that means the answer must be in radians. If it says between zero and 360, you must put it in degrees. Find the complex cube root of negative one plus square root of three i. Leave the answer in polar form, use degrees. So to find the cube root, first we are going to write this as r cis theta. To write this as r cis theta, we are going to find the r first, which means 
negative one quantity squared plus square root of three quantity squared. Remember, this is x plus y i, x plus y i. And by now we've seen it many times. So minus one quantity squared, square root of three quantity squared, this is one, this is three, they add up to four, comes out as two. So r is two. Again, just quickly. Just to remind you. Now let's find theta is tan inverse of y over x, y over x, square root of three over negative one. Let me just write this again. So this is an inverse of y over x. This is negative square root of three. If it were positive, it would give us 60 degrees. Because it's negative, it gives us negative 60 degrees. However, if you look at this one, so negative 60, this is in quadrant four, everybody. But this, is in quadrant two. And remember, pi or 180 degrees, that's all you need to add to negative 60 to come up with the correct answer of 120 because the period for tangent and cotangent is pi 180. So if you add 180, it gives you the correct angle. So you always adjust the angle based on the location of the point, which was quadrant two, quadrant two. And this is in quadrant four. So therefore, R C theta is two cosine of 120 plus I sine of 120. We want the cube root we are going to use this formula, which, which says z sub k is the nth root of r cis theta 0 over n plus 2k pi over n. So we want the cube root of 2. So we're going to write z sub k is the cube root of 2 cosine of we're going to divide this one by 3 plus 360k divided by 3. So again, I want to make sure we understand that because it says Q, n is 3, okay? So we have Q root of 2. Cosine of theta zero is 120 divided by three plus 360k. Remember, 2k pi or 360k are the same, but we want them in degrees. We're going to go with 360k divided by three, i sine of the same thing. So let's divide this by three. This becomes 40. This becomes 120 degrees times a k k goes all the way to n minus 1. So 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2. If we plug in 0, this goes away. So just 40 degrees. R, cis, 40. If we plug in 1, we get 120 and 40, 160. So R, cis, 160, of course, R is cube root of 2. If you plug in 2, 2 times 120, 240 plus 40 is 280. So R, cis, 280, R is cube root of 2. So those 
are the cube roots. Let's quickly locate them. So we have those this is from the previous page. So they are all representing three different points. The points are equally spaced with the circle centered at zero, zero, x squared plus y squared equals what? This is the radius. So cube root of two to the second power, because this is the radius class. So a circle centered at zero, zero with that. And then 40 degrees, that's the point. First of all, x squared plus y squared equals cube root of two quantity squared, okay? So that's z sub zero, if you will. Then make 120 degree angle, z sub one, cube root of two, cosine of 160 plus i sine of 60. Then make a 280, okay, angle. And in other words, spaced between or among those are, between any two of them is 120. So z sub two is cube root of two, cosine of two AD plus I sine of two AD. I have the proof for the de Moore's theorem as well as the division, the quotient of complex numbers. You can look at them at the end. You're not uh, responsible for it, but the proof is by induction. So just quickly to show you, and this is one of them. This is another one. This is the last one as it was mentioned. And uh, the proof is by induction and you're not responsible for it. But for example, you do n equals two, n equals three and so forth. N equals two, you, you raise this to the power of two, which is uh, basically this one times this one, cosine squared, plus two times i cosine theta sine theta uh, plus i sine theta squared, which makes it minus sine squared theta. And that's the proof for n equals two. You do the same thing for n equals three, cosine theta plus i sine theta to the third power, which means this thing uh, times cosine theta plus i sine theta, because this thing we already know is this. So we're gonna replace this one here. Now you do the boiling cosine theta times cosine two theta, uh, I sine theta times cosine two theta, uh, cosine theta times I sine two theta, I sine theta times cosine two theta, uh, I sine theta times I sine two theta. You just do the foiling. Cosine theta, cosine two theta. I sine theta, cosine two theta is two with the I first cosine theta, sine two theta. And then I and I is a negative one or I squared sine theta, sine two theta. And you have cosine of theta plus two theta plus I sine of theta plus two theta, which makes it cosine of three theta plus I sine of three theta. So that's how you prove that you continue with this or n equals four. And that is the proof by induction. 